Saints, welcome to St. Joseph Church. Kindly put off or put in silent mode your mobile phone during the Mass to avoid distraction. Thank you. We pray for the thanksgiving of the following, Sis Dal Jolly B. Diga and family, Sis Joan Escalar and family, Chester Anim Candiolari Candelario. We pray for the birthday of the following, Nicole Angela Armino, Rosy Kezora, Mary Nicole Angela Armin Armino, Alexis Gomez, Donny Alindongan. We pray for the special intention of Sis Joan Escalar and family. For the sick, Mary Bostarde, Annalyn Olpendo. We pray for the souls of the following, Candelario Bustarde, Nenfa Bustarde, Jojo Bustarde, Nathaniel Bustarde, Marcelino Bustarde, Mercedes Bustarde, Dominic Crito Electro Electrones, Illuminada Electrones, Cristel Poja, Patricio Diga Sr., Ernesto Cagunot, Arsenio Dega, John Desmond, Sheila Jose, Shang Xiaoyin, Linda Lin, Faustino Olpindo Sr., Joel Olpindo, Corazon Miko Olpindo, Juvita Quesora, Ignacio Donato, Feliciano de la Cruz, Margarita de la Cruz, Agin Aguilino de la Cruz, Pausiano de la Cruz, Dominador de la Cruz, Bencio de la Cruz, Teresita de la Cruz, Sebet Vernes, Pacundo Viernes, Abilardo Villorente, Estrella Villorente, Romeo Villorente, Juan Jimmy Villorente, Maria Rito Villorente, Stewart Elliot, Rolando Austria Jr., Jeffrey Walter Hesward, Milencio Ambagan, Anastasia V. Ambagan, Herman Ambagan, Susana Villanueva. That our merciful Lord forgive all transgression and welcome them to eternal paradise. For the Thanksgiving, Canoso family. Today is Friday of the 19th week in ordinary time. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from the nations to give thanks to your holy name and make it our glory to praise you. Our Mass presider is Father Joseph Tan, SVD. Let Father Ambrose Mong, SVD. Let us all stand and worship our holy triune God.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty, to Almighty God, God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most courageous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty ever living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, and we may marry to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us all be seated and listen attentively to the Word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The Word of the Lord came to me, Son of Man, Make known to Jerusalem her abomination. Thus says the Lord God to Jerusalem, By origin and birth, you are of the land of Canaan. Your father was Amorite and your mother a Hittite. As your birth, the day you were born, your navel cord was not cut, nor were you rubbed with salt and water, nor swaddled in swaddling cloths. No one looked on you with pity or compassion to do all, any of these things for you. Rather, you were thrown out on the ground as something loathsome the day you were born. Then I passed by and saw you weltering in your blood. I said to you, live in your blood and grow like a plant in the field. You grew and developed. You came to the age of puberty. Your breasts were formed. Your hair had grown, but you were still stark naked. Again, I passed by you and saw that you were now old enough for love. So I spread the corner of my cloak over you to cover your nakedness. I swore an oath to you and entered in a covenant with you. You became mine, says the Lord. Then I bathed you with water Wash away your blood and anointed you with oil. 
I clothe you with an embroidered gown, put sandals of fine leather on your feet. I give you a fine linen sash and silk robe to wear. I adorn you with jewelry. I put bracelet on your arms, a necklace about your neck, a ring in your nose, pendant in your ears, and a glorious diadem upon your head. Thus you were adorned with gold and silver. Your garments were of fine linen, silk, and embroidered cloth. Your f fine flour, honey, and oil were your food. You were exceedingly beautiful with the dignity of a queen. You were renowned among the nation for your beauty, perfect as it was, because of my splendor which I had bestowed on you, says the Lord God. But you were captivated by your own beauty. You used your renown to make yourself a harlot, and you, and you lavish your harotery har har in every passerby. That whose own you became. Yet I will remember the covenant I made with you when you were a girl, and I will set up an everlasting covenant with you, that you may remember and be covered with confusion, that you may utter silence for shame. When I pardon you for all you have done, says the Lord God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial son, the response be, You have turned your anger. You have turned your anger. God indeed is my savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord. And he has been my savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. Response. You have turned your anger. Give thanks to the Lord. Acclaim his name. Among the nation, make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. Response. You have turned your anger. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let, he, let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exaltation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Response. You have turned your anger. Let us all stand to honor the Holy Gospel. Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatever? He said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning, the Creator made them male and female and said, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, man must not separate. They said to him, Then why did Moses command that the men give the woman a bill of divorce and dismiss her. He said to them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives, 
But from the beginning, it was not so. I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, and marries another, commits adultery. His disciples said to him, If that is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. He answered, Not all can accept this word, but only those to whom that is granted. Some are capable of marriage because they were born so, incapable of marriage because they were born so, some because they were made so by others, some because they have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Whoever can accept this ought to accept it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we, the passage is about marriage and divorce, a very relevant and contentious issue now, as you know. The Pharisees heard Jesus teaching against divorce at the Sermon on the Mount, a teaching which they think contradicted the practice of the Jews. And so they sought to trap him at this instant into putting his teaching in a position opposition to Moses. In fact, they want to trap him. They want to discredit him. But Jesus knew their twisted intention, hypocrisy. And so Jesus grounded his teaching on God's original plan for man and woman from the beginning. What did God intend us to be? He knows that they were looking to get around the will of God and carve up an exception. But Jesus felt no need to pander to a crowd or offer an easy way out. What challenges when challenged? His focus was on what God intended from the very beginning. And even today, it's a response to everyone. It's a challenge to all of us. Those are worth facing issues of marriage, difficulties. Jesus' teachings seem so counter-cultural. No less today than in his own time. That a man, a marriage is between a man and a woman. Not between a man and a man or a woman and a woman like now. Not like that from the very beginning. It's clearly stated. I wonder what Jesus would think if today with our own culture with same-sex marriages and LGBT and whatnot. Anyway, Wonder, wonder, how can he be so bold and ask for so much? Since we still labor under the same sin, imperfection, hardness of heart, as the people of Moses' time and his time. The question of divorce. The key is that Jesus does not simply add new law. He brings the grace, that is the, the gift. Marriage is a gift. The grace to be able to live as God intended from the very beginning. That is, before sin entered the world. Christ can ask more of us because He Himself brings the grace for us to live our lives before God in a new way. That is why the disciples say, it is impossible for us as human beings. They say, yeah, of course it's not possible. Without the grace, it's not possible. We need the grace. And the important thing is that marriage is not for everyone. Some were born incapable of marriage because of biological defects. Some were made by others, the eunuchs, for example. And some renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom, a weakness, like the priest and religious life. It's very clearly stated. By grace, we are made new men and women in Christ, transformed into the children of God, who has empowered to live in holiness and full truth. By grace of God. So a marriage is about three people, men, women, and Christ. It's always to be that way. It has the grace of God. Whatever difficulties you can. And I know for a fact, because when I always do marriage inquiry, I have a lot of problems. I get it wrong. Because there's so many combinations. You know, some years ago, my own father told me, marriage is like a city under siege. 
those who want, those who are inside want to get out, and those who are inside want, those who are outside want to get in. But it's, a, it's a serious thing. It's not, it's a commitment. It's not about feelings. It's a choice you make. The disciples seem to be discouraged at first because the new teaching of Jesus is difficult to live. Then it is better not to marry. Unfortunately, this is the case now. People don't get married anymore. You know, this church, we have funerals every day. I hardly see any weddings. Or <laughs> only. No. <laughs> no. No weddings here. I hardly see any weddings here. And it's not good. There's no future. And religious vocation also comes from families. They are seeing things through their narrow experience and through the lens of popular opinion. People now don't get married. They cohabitate. They don't make a commitment at all. If it works, okay. If it doesn't work, sorry, bye-bye. This is quite bad. And we have what they call prenuptial agreement. Even before they get married, they're already preparing for divorce. How can it work like that? You already have buying insurance. There's no commitment at all. And the worst thing is about the children. Yet they must... Today, Jesus asks us to make a transformation, to encounter the, with the grace of Christ. So what I can say is that if you are married, please work on your marriage. If you are not getting married, think about it. <laughs> Pray for it. It's not going to be easy. It's a commitment. We do need to believe in that grace and to communicate it to others since it enables us to love others as He loves us. It is what brings the vitality and freshness to our Christian life and makes us able to offer something new and hopeful to the world around us. So today during this Mass, let us pray for all married couples, all young families, not so young, that they continue to make this commitment. We as Catholics and Christians must be a shining example to others of what family life is meant to be. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us... Husband and wife share in God's creation of new life. Our intercessions today center around the needs of parents and children. Father in heaven listens to our petitions as we present these to you as we say. Fill our homes with your love, O Lord. Fill our homes with your love, O Lord. We pray for the church that she may continue in her mission to reconciling and bringing family and community in, into unity, we pray. Fill our homes with your love, O Lord. We pray for government leaders and legislators that they may enact laws and policies that would build and foster family life, we pray. Fill yeah. our homes with your love, O oh Lord. We pray all marriage couples that they may be faithful in their marriage vows and God may protect their relationship and their family, we pray. Fill our homes with your love, O oh Lord. We pray for families broken by divorce or separation, that they may find support and understanding from people in their communities. We pray. Fill our homes with your love, O oh Lord. We pray for those experiencing difficulties in their marriage, that they may receive the grace to persevere in their commitments. We pray. Fill our homes with your love, O oh Lord. We present to the Lord our individual needs. We pray. Fill our homes with your love, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, grant us the grace to be faithful to you and to our family. May we not abandon our family whom you entrusted to us Instead, may we learn to protect and defend our family. All these we pray to Christ our Lord, 
together with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us all be seated as we prepare for the offertory. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Live up your heart. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. <laughs> Fall of our holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The 
mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have helped us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may marry to be co to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs> The Saviour's command from my divine teaching we dare to sing. graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, peace be with you.
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your merciful love, O Lord. Let me never be put to shame, for I call you on you.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm with us the like of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayer for the Holy Souls. Eternal Father, I offer you the most precious body and blood of divine Son, Jesus, in union with the masses said throughout the world today, for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, for those in my own home and in my family. Amen. Announcement. In behalf of El Shaddai community, we would like to invite you all to join the fellowship right after the Holy Mass. Thank you. And in behalf of Friday group, we would like to say thank you, Father Ambrose Mong, for celebrating the Holy Mass with us. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Pwede po kayo mag-join sa ating phrase.